Howdy folks, Daniel here from Cal's Hands Farming. Thanks for tuning in to another video. So, a couple videos back when I talked about doing Fomacha scores on goats, which will be up here, up here somewhere, um, I promised I'd give a video about doing fecal tests on goats and, you know, my whole deworming schedule. So, that's what we're going to be doing today. Before we get started, guys, I also wanted to just say thank you so much. Um, my last video was a pretty big success. Um, and I want to thank all y'all return viewers who are helping to make that happen. So keep watching, guys. It's really helping me a lot. Um, keep doing thumbs up. Um, if, you know, for these videos, I have the comments disabled. Um, you know, I just we decided to do that before I started this YouTube channel. Um, so I can't, you know, talk to you guys through comments and everything. But do do continue to like the video and everything and show interaction with it. It does help me a lot. So yeah, thank you guys. Let's get into it. So this right here is Aeneas. He is the one we're going to be doing the fecal test on today. All you're going to need for the fecal test, or at least for the uh, gathering of the fecal matter, the poo, is a little latex plastic glove. So I just like to um, use these because they keep all the pellets separated really nicely and clean. And I can just pop this glove in the fridge to keep them cool until I'm able to do the fecal test. Okay guys, now begins the waiting game. first started raising goats I was like how do you deworm them what do you do it was hard to get clear concise information so this video today is gonna be really quick and easy to understand and should help you all out on your goat raising journey deworming goats is actually a three-step process number one you need to do a fomager score to determine if the goat is anemic number two you need to do a fecal test to determine if the goat actually needs to be dewormed or if the anemia is caused by another problem. And number three, you need to actually deworm that goat. I explained how to do a fomager score um, test in my other video, so this video is going to be about doing a fecal test and deworming. So Aeneas is peeing right now, and that is a good sign that he's probably going to poop right after, so I'm getting ready. It's happening, it's happening. Did I get enough? Yes, I did. So, you only need two grams of fecal matter to do a fecal test. So, that's generally only about three pellets, and I got maybe five or six, so we should be good. This is great. Sometimes it does take a long wait, like it did today, but it's worth it if you're gonna save your goat's life, you know what I mean? Okay, so now that we've got this um, poop, we're gonna go pop it in the fridge to save for later to do a fecal test. Alrighty, so now that we've got our um, pellets here, I'll show you what you need to do the fecal test. You're going to need a flotation solution. Um, just, I got this online, it's a whole gallon it lasts literally forever so I do recommend getting pre-made flotation solution although you can try to make your own you're going to need a scale that can weigh in grams you're going to need a McMaster slide and this is the most important thing you're going to need right here because see those chambers those lines that's what you're going to use to measure the eggs the amount of eggs in each gram so then you're also going to need some type of mixing stick, you're going to need a dropper of some kind, a syringe to suck things up, and you're going to need three cups throughout the whole process. The first thing you're going to do is turn on your scale, set it for grams, and then place one of the cups on top of the scale. This one weighs in at three grams, so keep that in mind. You already have a cup that weighs three grams on the scale. Now, you're going to take your uh, fecal matter, and you're going to add two more grams onto there. So the scale will end up being about five-ish grams at the end. Like I said before, that's probably going to be about three pellets. 
But each gill has different size pellets, so you'll have to figure that out on your own. Alright, with three pellets, we've got to five grams, so that's all we need. Now, what you're going to do is use your mixing stick to mash these up. So now you're going to pour some of the flotation solution into another one of the cups. Give it a little mix. Alright, now that we've got this, you're going to take 28 milliliters of the flotation solution and add it to the two grams of fecal matter. Ten milliliters. One T milliliters. And Twenty eight milliliters. Anything you have left over, you can just pour back into the container. Now we'll just mix this up until it's really well combined. And then we will strain this into another cup using a strainer and I forgot to mention this earlier you do need a strainer so I'll just put that there and then we'll pour this all that into there we'll use our mixing stick to get all that down into there alrighty so now comes the tricky part you're going to take your little dropper and you're going to suck up some of this strained solution and you're going to pour it into the top of each of these chambers. You have to fill up both of them. Alrighty, now that we've got the McMaster slide filled up, we'll let it sit for around 15 minutes. You can let it sit up to an hour. I have done that in the past. But it usually only needs 10, maybe 15 minutes for all the eggs to float up to the top because of that um, flotation solution. So after that 15 minutes is up, we'll take it to the microscope and check it out. I've got my microscope set up here. And one important thing that I learned after a year or two of trying to do this is to add um, 10 time magnifier eye pieces otherwise you will not be able to see the eggs they'll be too small so we'll put those in and then we'll be ready so the way a McMaster slide works is you count the number of eggs you see in each of these little bars each of these chambers on each side of the slide so you count this side and then you count that side and then you add them up and you just and you multiply that number by 50 to get the total number of eggs per gram so what we're looking for is homages, contours, or barber pool worms because that's what really affects the goats the most. So we'll go through here counting the number of eggs we find in each chamber and then we'll add them up and multiply it by 50 to get our number. And then based on that we can decide whether the goat needs to be dewormed or not. 
if the number is under a thousand and the goat is really healthy and has a good uh, fomager score, you might not need to deworm him. But if it's above a thousand, you're probably most likely going to need to deworm that goat. All right, there's one egg. Two. Come on, three. All right, three down. Now going down, one. In chamber one, I found 11 eggs, and in chamber two, I found 19. So we'll add those up. 11 and 19 will be 30, and we'll t multiply that by 50, well, to get us 1,500 eggs per gram. All right, so I've written down 1,500 eggs per gram. That's kind of, I mean, kind of average for me. I'd like to keep them less than that. You can see as I move up, I did one at 1,150 and one at 800. 800 is a good um, worm count, not too bad. But like this guy and this guy could both be dewormed, and that will be fine. But, of course, you're going to also have to check their farm to, to see if they even need it. Because if they have, a, you know, a, a worm load like this, and they still have a really good fomager score. They don't need to be dewormed because they're handling that worm load really well. Unless you, you know, you want to deworm them. So now that we've determined that Aeneas uh, could be dewormed, I'll show you the dewormer I use. Just Cydectin. This is the go-to dewormer for almost all goat raisers. It's a dewormer that still works for barber pole worms. Um, barber pole worms in many areas of the country have become resistant to safeguard and other white dewormers like that. But Cydectin is a great one. It's technically an oral drench for sheep, although you can use it for goats if you triple the dosage. Goats are, goat worms are a lot harder to kill than um, sheep worms. They really thrive inside of them. So my vet has recommended to triple the dose. So for Aeneas, who would probably weigh around maybe 66 pounds, the dose for a sheep would be 6 milliliters. But for him, that would be actually 18 milliliters. So if you give him 18 milliliters of this, I'm not going to deworm him right now because he's really healthy, so I'll, I'll probably deworm him in a little bit, but not today. Um, so yeah, that's that's about it. Cydectin works great. I also use another dewormer, Valbasin, for tapeworms. If you're seeing tapeworm segments that look like little rice um, granules coming out in their stool, you're going to want to deworm them with Valbasin. So this is the Valbasin I was talking about. This is actually prescribed for goats as well, as you can see up here. Um, so you can use just the on-bottle dosage. It is not recommended to use this for pregnant does. However, it can um, harm their development of their babies. But anyway, these are the two dewormers I use. I almost always use Cydectin. But in case of tapeworms um, or maybe flukes or something else, I could use a Valbazin. Alrighty, that's about it, folks. The main thing I wanted to get across is you have to be specific and technical in your goat deworming. You don't just want to go out and deworm your whole herd every three months they'll become resistant to those, the worms will become resistant to those dewormers very quickly. So you only deworm each specific and individual goat when they need to be dewormed. So that's about it. It's really simple and easy once you learn it. You just need to get yourself a microscope, um, get yourself the equipment you need, and you can go about doing these fecal tests on your goats and deworming them and keeping them healthy. So thanks for watching another um, little episode of Cal's Hands Farming. See you guys on the next one.